We are thankful that you have decided to join us for our service. We know that we have people joining from many locations and we're thankful that we can spend just a little bit of time with you. I'm especially thankful for these final opportunities I have to share in worship here at the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. And during these last few services, these sermons, I believe it is powerful for us to think about what truly remains, what ties us together. And as we're looking at this verse, 1 Corinthians 13, we know it is our faith, our hope, and our love. Children of God, come to the waters. We gather to be restored and renewed. Come with your faith and your doubt. We respond to the one who claims and calls us. Christ summons us to draw near. Let us worship God with joy and thanksgiving. We are invited to find a place of stillness, to rest before and in God, and to know God more fully, to know God's mercy and grace and love for us, even when, especially when, we come stumbling and broken and far from the people we would wish to be. We can lay down all these burdens at God's feet and receive love into our hearts anew. And so, with hope before us, let us join together in our unison prayer of confession, which will be followed by a time for personal prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we long to draw close to you, but we are afraid. We are afraid to heed your summons, for we do not know what awaits us when we step out in faith. We are wary of taking risks for our sake because the forces of chaos seem stronger than your assurances to us. We worry that we will not have enough faith in you or in the gifts you've given to us to do the things you ask. Forgive us, Lord, and save us. Reach out your hand and lift us from our fear that we might follow you faithfully. Amen. Let us now join together in our responsive assurance of pardon. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. 
for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Good morning. I'm coming to you today from beside the water, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. In our story today, it tells us that Jesus goes up onto a mountain and he spends a long time up on the mountain praying. And when he comes down, his disciples had been out in a boat and by now they were way far offshore. So Jesus decides to go out to the boat to join them. But he doesn't take a boat to get out there and he doesn't swim to get out there. What does he do? He walks on the water. But as he starts to get closer to the boat, the disciples become afraid. They think it's a ghost because no man can walk on water. But Jesus says to them, do not be afraid, it is I, Jesus. And Peter said, if it's you, Lord, then help me to come to you on the water. So Jesus says, you may come. So Peter gets out of the boat and he starts to walk on the water towards Jesus. But suddenly there's a wind blowing and some waves and Peter loses his focus on Jesus and he starts to sink. And he says, Lord, save me. And Jesus puts out his hand and he saves Peter. And they get into the boat and the wind and the waves all die down. Well, that's just like in our lives. When we feel a storm inside of us or we feel the wind blowing, there have been some storms this week that were a little bit scary. But Jesus is always with us. And if we go to Jesus in prayer, we can feel Jesus' calm presence with us anytime. When we're afraid, when we're on stormy seas, or if we're just feeling a little bit anxious in our lives, we can always go to Jesus in prayer and we will always feel calm. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the sun that comes out after a storm. Thank you for reaching out your hand to us when we are afraid. Help us to remember to spend time with you each day in prayer to bring us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And this is a very special time. Yeah, we believe all moments are divine, but this is a very special divine moment. We get to spend this time together and share in this baptism. Uh, let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for this time that we can be together for something that is so important, that connects us with the divine, that truly connects us with you now and for eternity. Uh, we just pray that we will know your presence through these next few moments. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. On behalf of those gathered, I present to you Michael Henry Allred, son of Patrick and Hannah Faye Allred, for the sacrament of baptism. Hannah Faye and Patrick, do you desire that Michael Henry be baptized? We do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? We do. And we have a question that we will share with the congregation. And to the congregation, do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Henry by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and be a faithful member of his church? If so, say, we do. We, we do. do. And what is your child's name? Michael, Michael Henry Allred. Michael Henry Allred. I baptize you in the of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And may you know that you are a child of the covenant, that you are a seed of God's grace, and you are part, is part of God's family for eternity. Amen. Let us share a closing prayer. Loving God, we give thanks that we know you do move in all these moments. Each moment of our lives, you are with us. And at this moment especially, we feel your presence. We give thanks for Henry and the gift that he is. We just pray now that he will continue to live in that reality of the grace he's sealed in 
And we just give thanks for all who are gathered on this day that we know we are with you in a community now and for eternity. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Please join with me in our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was alone. By this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. From the wind was against them, and early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were afraid, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong winds, he became frightened and became, began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is a very powerful object lesson. It teaches you about trust and about faith. Maybe you've participated in this object lesson. It, it takes two people. One person stands in back of you about three or four feet and you cross your arms and you fall backwards. And that person that is standing in back of you is there to catch you before you hit the ground. As I said, that is a very powerful object lesson when you feel yourself falling backwards and you literally put your life in the hands of another. I think about different times that I have participated in that activity. Sometimes it's used as a crowd breaker. But I also think about times when I was actually a little skeptical about the person that was supposed to catch me. Now think about doing that object lesson, say, with a sibling. In my case, it would be my brother. And as I reflect on that, someone who is so familiar causes a little concern. Will they actually catch me? Maybe there's a friend or two that you also would feel the same way about. Just a little concern. You just know each other too well and you've had too many good times together. Will they catch you before you hit the ground. There is sometimes an issue with familiarity. Well, we just heard some lines from the Gospel of Matthew, and they also are talking about faith. We're in the middle of a series based on a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. We're talking about what remains, what knits together the temporal, material world with eternal. 
Last week we talked about hope. We started there. Because in Christ, the light that has come into the world, we have a sense of what that kingdom is about. Christ brings that kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hope is about adjusting the eyes of our hearts, our souls, and our minds to the very real presence of the living Christ who has brought that kingdom. Hope is about seeing the infinite possibilities that truly do exist. Now faith, faith is how we embrace all those possibilities. Faith is how we enter that kingdom. Now as people who are probably watching this service, as people in the church, we are so familiar with that word. We're so familiar with the word faith. And sometimes with familiarity can come just a bit of skepticism. See, we've become so familiar with faith that we sometimes do not take it very seriously. I think about Peter. Peter in this passage that we had read this morning. See, he was so familiar with the environment that they were in. When Jesus comes walking out on the water, see, Peter knows the ways of the water, of the sea. He knows his boat. And so when he's invited to come out, step out in faith, he is so familiar with the surroundings that he starts to struggle. And he literally begins to sink. Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish theologian and philosopher from the 19th century, talks about the fact that in our belief, in those belief systems we've put together where faith is so familiar to us, in our belief we need to be willing to take a leap of faith. Kierkegaard talks about the fact that if we stay turned within in our own belief systems, we begin to develop that skepticism, but it's when we're willing to take a leap. That is how we truly embrace the kingdom that has come. That is how we realize the infinite possibilities that hope is present in this kingdom and all that is possible with us. It comes through faith. It's, it's a leap. It's stepping out like Peter needed to do. It's literally being willing to fall into it. It's hearing those words of Jesus, fear not, it is I, take heart. It becomes so difficult for us to truly access what is available we even so often claim this faith. We claim to have that kind of faith. But again, it is so familiar to us that if we examine those claims, we will discover disclaimers. We put many disclaimers on our, our faith. When it comes to putting our faith into action, we discover those disclaimers. We have seen so clearly the last couple months how we as people in the church, as Christians, need to be in action. We need to be speaking, we need to be present, but we have this way of even as we claim that need, there are those disclaimers. And they keep us in leaky boats that are taking on water. They keep our feet from wanting to leap they keep us from truly falling into and giving up that thought process, that skepticism that keeps us from fully embracing what is truly possible. There's a book written by Jordan Kisner. It's entitled Thin Places, 
Essays from In Between. And she writes this. There is a membrane between imagining God's love as a thought experiment and experiencing it as absolute reality. And if you slip across it, the entire known universe shatters and reassembles itself to be more whole and beautiful than you thought was possible. See, faith is about slipping across that membrane. It is about reassembling a sense of the kingdom, the light that has come into the world. We need to calm ourselves to be aware of the still, small voice that is speaking to us, encouraging us to step out, to take the leap, to lean in, to fully embrace what is possible in this kingdom through our faith. We need to listen to that small voice that is speaking. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Today I'm standing behind the Bethel AME Church here in Morristown. For more than five years, the lower level of this church has been the home and base of operations for the Table of Hope. The Table of Hope is a place, in quotes, where hope starts and the community gathers to share, in quote. Dinner is served Monday through Friday from 5.30 to 7 p.m. When I became involved a few years ago, anyone who needed a meal was invited into the church to find a seat at one of the round tables set up in the basement. We, the volunteers, would serve them a healthy meal, dessert, drinks, and coffee. There was ample opportunity for the volunteers to sit down at a table and get to know members of our wider community. COVID-19 has impacted our procedures. Now the volunteers wear masks and gloves. And we serve our community, one person at a time, handing out a hot dinner and drinks to go. There's still time for a friendly greeting and a blessing as they depart. This past Monday, I helped two other volunteers hand out 70 dinners. With loss of jobs, the COVID pandemic has greatly increased the need for food distribution in our area. The Table of Hope, with the aid of a donated school bus, has responded to the need by creating a mobile food pantry. This mobile pantry supplies groceries to individuals and families, not only in Morristown, but also Dover, Parsippany, and Mount Olive Township. During April and May of this year, more than 220 tons of food was handed out. You know God works in mysterious ways. Nine years ago, the Table of Hope did not exist. Nine years ago, Hurricane Irene hit our area, caused major flooding along the Whippany River, and destroyed much of the Bethel AME Church. The church met the challenge with vision faith and hope, rebuilt the structure, and dedicated the lower level of the building to God and to the community. Don't you want to be a part of this story? The good news is that you can. Find ways to participate as a volunteer or donate online at our church website. The need is great. If you are like me, you have the time and resources to join your community in this important way. Deus te bendiga. God bless you. Thank you. And now let us open our hearts and minds in prayer to God. God of favor and purpose, you are our destiny and our companion on the journey. You plant and grow the seeds of our faith and give us the courage to take the leap. You were with us in our deepest pain, fear, and bewilderment. You were with us in our shining moments of greatest joy and meaning. You lift us from the depths of discouragement and walk with us over the troubled waters of life. You fill our lives with blessing. We come to you now with confidence on behalf of our own needs and on behalf of our needy world. We pray this day for the people of Beirut and Lebanon as they contend with the aftermath of the port explosion earlier this week. Surround all those who have lost loved ones with your care and compassion. Direct and focus the efforts of relief workers to deliver their aid safely and effectively. Root out corruption and negligence wherever they may be found in the country's leadership and allow justice to blossom instead. We pray for residents of our own country who continue to struggle with so much. We lift up those negatively affected by Storm Isaias this past week. Grant patience and well being to those still without power and to those recovering from property damage. We commend to you all of our school districts, their administrators, teachers, students, and families who are grappling with such gargantuan, complex, and life and death decisions. Throw your mantle of safety over them. 
Ease their fear and anxiety in every possible way. Inspire their leaders with truly unique solutions to deliver the greatest good while protecting the vulnerable. All of us whose health is vulnerable before COVID-19, students who are vulnerable to being left behind educationally, parents whose livelihoods are vulnerable without the support schools usually provide, and families who are vulnerable to the extreme pressure of these days. As this pandemic wears on and early protections and support programs expire without clear plans for renewal, we ask your intervention and provision for the millions of people at imminent threat of losing their homes through eviction or foreclosure, those faced with new or ongoing unemployment, and for many, the accompanying lack of health insurance, and those suffering from food insecurity. Show us how we can respond for the well-being of our friends and neighbors by providing direct aid, by advocating with our elected officials for necessary protections and supports, and by creating and claiming collective power for change. And of course, we continue to pray for our healthcare workers and their families as they daily rise to the challenges of these times. Surround them with your strength and mercy. We lift before you all those who are mourning, those who are sick and suffering, those recovering from injury or surgery, those bowed beneath the weight of mental illness or addiction, and those who faithfully shoulder the daily work of caregiving. Provide for each as you know they have need. Surround them with your love and comfort. Uplift them through your compassion. And we particularly commend to you those near and dear to us, Mr. and Mrs. Fong and their family, Hal and Carolyn, Riley, and all those we name before you now. Gracious Lord, clothe us with your favor and love. Inspire us with dreams from you. Hold us up when we falter in life's storms and bring us safely to your promised place of rest and peace. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now as we prepare to go, we prepare to step out in faith. But may we know that to truly be present, to experience the hope that is ours, we have to be willing to take that leap. And we take that leap in the knowledge of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.